Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 111 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This case illustrates techniques for overcoming tortuosity and for treating coronary bifurcations. This is the target lesion. It is a lesion in the circumflex and the obtuse marginal branch. In this view, it appears that this is a Medina 0, no significant disease in the proximal main vessel, 1, significant lesion in the distal main vessel, which we call the circumflex in this case, and then one because of a significant lesion in the first obtuse marginal branch. So which approach should one take? This has disease in both vessels and doing a provisional strategy might have the risk of including the side branch, the obtuse marginal. So a strategy of T-stand, given that the angulation was about 90 degrees, or tap might be preferable. Before doing standing, however, we have to advance wires across the lesion. And this is one of the challenges of the case. There is significant tortuosity. There is a more than 90 degree angle to go from the left main into the circumflex. And one of the potential problems when trying to advance wires through these bends is that the wire tends to prolapse into the main vessel. How to overcome this? This has been discussed on video 8.3, but these are some of the solutions. One is to put a large bend on a guide wire, sometimes a polymer jacketed guide wire may be more likely to advance. Some guide wires, like the Pilot 200, have less tendency to prolapse. Another option is to use an angulated microcatheter, such as the Venture or the Supercross 120. Another option is to use the reversed guide wire technique or hairpin guide wire in which uh, there is a bend in a polymer jacket about uh, 3 cm from the tip, the wire is advanced past and then is pulled back towards the origin of the vessel we want to wire, and then the wire might actually go down. And finally, there is the option of putting a deflection balloon in the main vessel that deflects the wire and allows more pushing to direct the wire into the angulated branch. But sometimes uh, things may work better than expected. These are repeat attempts, uh, still using a workhorse Sion Blue Guide Wire. There is uh, essentially a 180 degree bend, but uh, slowly the wire seems to be taken through the first bend and the second bend, and now the tip is prolapsed. And sometimes the prolapsed tip actually can be a good thing because it prevents the guide wire from going into side branches. And sure enough, we were subsequently able to advance the loop and get it distally into the vessel. So sometimes being patient and just using work, workhorse guide wire may be successful even in cases of significant tortuosity. Of course, now we have to advance a guide wire into the other branch. But now the advantage is that the original guide wire is to some extent straightening the angulation and that enabled a second workhorse guide wire to advance into the obtuse marginal branch. And this is uh, the angiogram in a slightly different angulation than the original um, angiogram. And this actually is very useful because it changes the description of the lesion. The lesion in the obtuse marginal is not actually at the bifurcation, but slightly further down into the vessel. And there is no significant disease, apparently, into the more proximal portion of the OM1. So this effectively changes the bifurcation from a 0, 1, 1 to a 0, 1, 0, which means that a provisional standing strategy is actually preferable for this lesion. And this should be done after putting a stand more distal into the OM to treat that lesion. So the plan has changed now. This is essentially a 0, 1, 0 bifurcation and the provisional technique was selected. This is the stand into the obtuse marginal branch. We did have a balloon into the main vessel in the circumflex in case that the OM stand did go further back than we anticipated. But actually, we were fortunate in that uh, the stand did not move. So now our plan is to advance a stand into the circumflex. And this is what can happen sometimes. Even though we did have an 8 French femoral guide, 
which is very supportive. That's an EBU-375 guide. If one pushes too much, even with having two wires into the vessel, then one can lose everything, can lose the guide position, and then that pulls the wires back. So whenever advancing equipment into a vessel, it is critical to pay attention not only at the position of the equipment, whether it's balloon, stent, or microcatheter, but also at the position of the guide wires, the position of the guide, because if this is lost, of course, everything is lost. So had to rewire the vessel, which was done similar to the first time, workhorse guide wire. Um, now it tended to favor going to the obtuse marginal branch, but then it could be redirected into the circumflex. Once again, we formed the loop and that advanced distally into the vessel. Because there was no significant disease anymore at the origin of the obtuse marginal, we decided to not actually place a wire into the obtuse marginal. And uh, we did additional attempts to deliver the stand. One of the options to facilitate delivery is to do predilatation, which we had done, but also to use a shorter stand or a thinner strut stand that can be more deliverable, or using the body wire technique or potentially using a guide extension. But eventually, um, by advancing slowly, we were able to get the stand into position. There appears now to be disease in the ostium of the circumflex and uh, in addition to the disease distally. But this is most likely a pseudo lesion because of straightening of the vessel from the guide wire that has gone through. So the stand was placed and then uh, there is a good result of the bifurcation. We do have a TIMI3 flow into the obtuse marginal branch. There is a lesion distally, which could be spasm. So nitroglycerin was given that uh, significantly improved that disease. And uh, it looks like this was actually spasm. This is a hinge point of the proximal and more distal portion of the vessel. So this is an example of a case combining treatment of a bifurcation and significant tortuosity illustrates how a workhorse wire can be sometimes knuckled to advance through tortuosity while avoiding side branches. The importance of paying attention not only at the equipment we are trying to deliver, but also at the guide catheter and the distal wire position. The possibility of pseudo-lesion formation when a guide wire is advanced through highly tortuous vessels that may create additional lesions that are not true lesions, but are just the result of the guide wire straightening that vessel. And finally, this was a bifurcation 010, Medina classification. And uh, for such bifurcations, the provisional technique is the preferred strategy. And this was done successfully in this case. It also illustrates that the original view that suggested it was more complex bifurcation was not real. And that before starting to perform PCI, it is critical to perform in geography on various angulations and potentially also doing intravascular imaging to fully understand the anatomy of the bifurcation and help with selection of the bifurcation standing technique. Once again, the provisional strategy is the preferred technique for most bifurcations, but when both the main vessel and the side branch have significant disease and there is significant risk for losing the side branch, an upfront two stand technique may be needed. For those te techniques, you only need to know two techniques. One of them is the T or TAP technique, and the second one is either the culotte or the DK crust technique. In our lab, we usually perform the DK crust technique for most of the two stand uh, uh, bifurcation strategies. Thank you.